Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. We're in Spokane for second round tournament action. Fourth seeded Gonzaga out of the WCC advancing. They'll take on fifth seeded Utah out of the Pac-12. Oh, the kennel is going to be on fire tonight. You could count on that. Who's going to grab that last ticket to the Sweet 16? Stars will be out. We cannot wait. A look at our updated Region 4 Portland bracket. Tonight's winner will face Texas, Stanford, North Carolina State, having made it to the Sweet 16 as well. Good evening, everybody. Ann Chutz joined by my broadcast partner. That's Mike Tebow, Washington Mystics GM in the WNBA. Dream matchup, so much at stake. You can feel the energy. Well, when you have a spot in the Sweet 16 on the line, a 4-5 mm -hmm. matchup like this with such even teams is what you hope for. Modern basketball, three-point shots, power in the post. Power in the post is right. Now we're talking about Alyssa Peely and Yvonne Ejim. Talk about power. Well, this is the marquee matchup. I mean, two of the better post players in the country. You know, Ejim is a force inside, a great offensive rebounder and a great post player. And you have Alyssa Peely on the other side, modern post player, undersized, but can shoot at the three-point line, distributes, and plays on the block. Oh, welcome into the kennel. Technically, the McCarthy Athletic Center, affectionately known as the kennel. We're on the campus of Gonzaga University, where the fourth-seeded Zags will host fifth-seeded Utah. The joint is jumping 6,000 plus. A look at today's starting lineups presented by Capital One for the Utes. Vieta makes this club go. McQueen Johnson will be critical for Utah tonight, not for the Zags. The Trong sisters are a handful, so much fun to watch. And know this, Brenna Maxwell will be facing her former Utah teammates for the first time since transferring to Gonzaga. So we are ready to tip off. Gonzaga hosting for the first time since 2013, taking on Utah out of the rugged Pac-12. And we are underway. Gonzaga in their home lights with the tip. Well, we'll see. I think they're going to try to go to Egypt if they can quickly. Gonzaga with that first round victory over UC Irvine starting a little bit slowly. Let's see if they can start. <laughs> a That's better. a good sign. And usually it's on the block. This time they tried to go the other way around. We got a little bit cross matched here. You had um, Alyssa Pilly and, and Navon Ejim. They're not going to be matched up against each other all night. The Utes defeating South Dakota State in round one. Peely just yep. muscles it in. The two stars have yep. just started out. <laughs> now you're going to see Ejim guard Peely, but on the other end, it's going to be Jenna Johnson guarding Ejim. Nice start for both clubs. They both were a little sluggish initially in those first round victories here at the Kennel. Nothing there for Hollingsworth. Vieta wants to push. Keeps that dribble alive. Stop and pop, not there. We'll go the other way. A rebounding is going to be critical tonight, Mike. It really is. We saw both teams down the stretch on Saturday do a great job of blocking out, and it ended up being a critical part of the game. Pull up jumper, a little short, hustling in for that board. McQueen, who was dynamic in that first round game, both ends of the floor. And now Peely. Ten on the shot clock. Skip pass. Wilkie. Rimming off. Peely offensive board. Utes will start anew. Well, when you have this many three-point shots that we'll see, they're going to be a lot of long rebounds. And so guards are going to have to come and dig in and help on the long rebounds. Posts aren't going to be able to do it all. Healy, ball on the deck, single coverage, sweeping in and scoring. It's a nice luxury to have a post player that can finish with either hand fairly equally, too. 2,000 point score as Peely spent her first few years at USC, now at Utah. Wilkie this time with the board, pivotal for Utah in game one. 
the game will have a pace just like this. Okay, how about the start for Peely? That's, that's what she does. You better get out and guard her out there. And she's quick enough with her first step that if you come too tight on her, she can go by a lot of post players. What a start for Peely. Remember, she had 37 points two times this year against South Carolina and Southern Cal. Oh, just like a fullback going in for the two is Kaylee Trong. These teams, just in watching them practice and prepare, they're so similar. Both have post players that can play outside and inside. They like the high-low. They got three-point shooters all over the floor. Ball stripped away. Utah head coach Lynn Roberts, 420 win seasons, including the last three straight. Last year's Pac-12 coach of the year, coming off last year's sensational season where this Utah club made it all the way to the Sweet 16, losing at the bitter end to the eventual champion, LSU. Nowhere to go. Dumping it high-low. Perfect pass. I think you're going to say high-low a lot tonight. <laughs> That's Hollingsworth connecting with Ejim. Beautifully done. 7-6, Utes with the lead. Back and forth we go. Great start to this second round game. Ejim battling. Johnson keeps the ball alive. Peely, another long ball. Oh, baby, Peely already with a couple of triples. Ten points for Alyssa Peely already. Already. Answer, Collingsworth. Again. Post players that are versatile. Hollingsworth, she balances out Ejim's game. Love the game of Liza Hollingsworth. Just keeps getting better every single year. Or Front run out available if they see it. Vieta, the quick hands. Gonna go up against Hollingsworth. Stepping through, they're gonna call her for the walk. I think it's a good call. Well, here's, here's the hands of Vieta. She's just got quick hands. Has the right attack, right idea to cross over, but takes the extra step right there. That's a great job by Hollingsworth to come over and make it uncomfortable. Yes, and that's all you can do. You don't want to foul in that situation, especially early in the game. Esther Little onto the floor now for Gonzaga. In for rebounding and defense primarily. Maxwell will take a seat. Hyben's in as well. Sixth player of the year for the WCC. Ooh. It's going to be physical inside. Lisa Fortier, 10th year, semifinalist for Naismith Coach of the, of the Year. Six-time WCC Coach of the Year in all those 20 win seasons. My goodness. You know, technically, they're still a mid-major, but nobody around the country anymore that has to play and thinks of them that way. They are a power school now in basketball on both men's and women's side. McQueen with that foul, by the way. Her first, team's first. But speaking of mid-majors, Mike, Gonzaga is the last remaining mid-major team in this tournament. That says a lot about this club. And, and to be hosting. Uh, you bet. The, the, you get a four seed. Uh, they've they've went out and played a tough schedule preseason and our non-conference and it's paid off. Deja Young checking in for Utah. 11 to 10 Gonzaga with the lead. Here's Young. Wilkie wants that baseline. Strong wouldn't let her have it. Seven on the shot clock now. Vieta. Jab step, jab step, McQueen. That's great defense. The crowd had something to do with that. Well, Gonzaga, when they got in trouble there, they were willing to switch some of the big plays. Student section is loud and into it. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? What a start to this ball game. Gonzaga leading Utah 11 to 10 in the first quarter. Back and forth we go. Let's check out tonight's most reliable player brought to you by Xfinity.
Well, Alyssa Pilly, she's done all the scoring. She's got all 10 points. And if you go back to the end of the game the other night, she made five of her last six shots in that game, and it's four for four to start. Nine, to, nine of 10 is a really good straight stretch for anybody, and knocks it down with a three, her second of the game. It's way too early for this, Mike, but Peely's on pace to score something like 40 <laughs> or 50 points, for goodness sakes. Oh, no, it would be a lot more than that. <laughs> well, i got to give her a little rest on occasion, my friend. Uh, she's, I mean, you can see all the dynamics that she has. She's powerful inside, she rebounds, and then she stretches the floor. I mean, then if your, your post player has to come out and guard her there, she has a quick first step. Last year's debut with Utah, Peely was the Pac-12 Player of the Year this year. All Pac-12, and again, over 2,000 points scored. Gonzaga with the ball, the lead by a singleton. And then it gets interesting that Egypt for Gonzaga is getting the early rest. They took her out and didn't bring her. I thought they'd bring her back from the timeout, but here she is coming to the scores table now, her and Maxwell both. Hollingsworth whistled for that foul, her first team's first, a chance for Utah to grab the lead. Wilkie backs it up. McQueen, catch and shoot, not there. Into the hands of Kaylee Trong, she wants to push. Good hands from behind by Vieta. Maxwell Ejim ready to check back in for Gonzaga. Peely returns to the floor for Utah. Yeah, they're gonna try to stay matched up as best they can, the two of them. I think both coaches know that they need them on the floor as much as possible. And we saw again, just on this last play, the quickness of Vieta getting out and pressuring ball handlers. He's Vieta. all over Maxwell right yes. now. Good call, Mike. Plenty of time on the shot clock. High pick from Hybens, and it's a good one. Good baseline help defense by Peely. Got bailed out here with the kick yep, ball because sure they were did. running out of time. There was six left on the shot clock. You're going to watch Utah sag off of Esther Little. Mike, not much of a score. Plays the great defense and rebounds. And that's one of the things you're trying to, you know, find a, when you have a player like that in the game. you got to figure out ways to make them a threat offensively. Coming off the pick. Stepping back to three, bam, beauty. Well, both Trong sisters are really deadly three-point shooters. They just have a great feel for it, and they're great penetrators and creators as well. Seven now for Kaylee Trong. Look at the execution, man, Johnson and McQueen. They practiced that as shoot around this morning, trying to get some backdoor situations, but actually both teams went to work at that. 14-12 Gonzaga, 3.02 left to go in this very entertaining first quarter. Ejim Short, remember the winner of this game, advances to the Sweet 16. The last ticket to be punched, you're looking at it. This game will determine who is the last remaining Sweet 16 team and another three-pointer for Utah. McQueen. She was one of the heroes the other night when they were stalled out. She and Wilkie kind of gave them a, 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 a real good jump in the second half. McQueen had 17 points, four boards, six assists, and no turnovers in that first round game. Ivans can't get it home. Here's Little with seven on the shot clock. Now Maxwell wants it. She's got a quick release, but she is hot. Egypt's got to put it up. Into the hands of McQueen, and here comes Utah. Utah's got to feel pretty good about what they're doing defensively right now because they've made everything on the perimeter tough. Peely got great position. She will go to the line. Well, we talked at the top about modern basketball analytics, which says you get layups or points in the paint and threes. From the other night, just look at this for Utah. They scored 68 points. They had 36 in the paint, 24 at the three-point line, six at the free throw line and only two from the mid-range mm. and pretty close on the other side too a little more mid-range Gonzaga's a little bit more content with their 12 at the mid-range but they also scored more points they are going to shoot threes and go to the rim that last foul by the way was on esther little her first team's second peely an 81 percent free throw shooter buries them both and the peely family i love the corn dad i love the corn 
They are here. They've got signs, mom and dad, brothers, sisters, aunts and uncles. It's just a great story. Peely with 12 points already. Maxwell, Vieta all over her. Quick release, not there for Brenna. There's the board by Lonnie White, who has just checked in for Utah. There it is. The close out to her, she pump takes. Good board, Ejim. Stepping through, not getting the roll. Into the hands of Peely. She thinks twice before bringing it up herself. Yeah, let her play point guard, too. <laughs> what a start by Peely. Unbelievable. 17-14, Utes, buck nine left to go in this wild first quarter. Young, you bet. And those are almost bonus points for them. Young is just starting to improve as a three-point shooter, but when they get points like that from her on the perimeter, it puts a lot more pressure on the defense. 10-0, Utah run. The lead is six under a minute to go in the first. The half-court defense by Utah. Mike has been suffocating to this point. Well, they, Johnson's got the one-on-one -on -one matchup with Ejim, and they are nose-to-nose -nose with the three-point shooters. Kaylin Strong, oh, baby, NBA three and then some. We're going to, as I said before, we're going to see a lot of threes if people can get themselves open. Man, you broke it down, and on cue, another triple. And now we have the zone by Gonzaga, something they got to uh, early in the game the other night to change the flow of the game against UC Irvine. Shot clock off, game clock at 10 right here. Peely looking for a cutter. Vieta hesitates. Got to put it up if you're Johnson. Wow, what a stick by Jenna Johnson, and what a first quarter for Utah. 23-17, Utah with the lead. Well, the two stars have been going. Ejim, she's a force, but she's knocked out some jump shots, too. You know, energy inside, finishing at the rim, and then Alyssa Pili going to the basket, either hand, Utah on top. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this town. We're in Spokane, NCAA Women's Championship, part of the Regional Four in Portland Pod. Top 25 matchup right now. The Utes leading Gonzaga going into the second quarter. Some hot three-point shooting, Mike. Well, they got four different players that have already made threes. They have five that shoot over 35%, and their spacing allows them to get this. They've knocked them down. They're five for 10 from the three-point line already. At that rate, we're going to see 43s tonight. <laughs> Mike's doing the math because I can't, but I hear you, buddy, just as you predicted. And Peely with those 12 points in the first quarter alone, including a couple of those triples. And, you know, when you, when you plan to think about double teaming a little bit, that's one thing, but when she's stepping out to the three, there is no double team out there. That's a great point. Second quarter underway. We're at the kennel. Packed house. White back rimming off. Kaylee Trong with the rebound, and she'll trot it up. Can Gonzaga get Maxwell going, Mike? Well, I think they're going to try to have to do that, but it's going to probably have to come from an inside-out game like that. They've got to get a few buckets there because she's being face-guarded everywhere. Nose to nose. Nice execution by the Zags to open up this quarter. Quick pass and one. Peely to the line. Her release and footwork sublime. Well, Ajim gambled a little bit on this one, trying to get around the front and steal the pass. When you do that, it's too late. Now you're having a little guard have to come across and take on the brunt of Alyssa Peely on the block. Kaylee Trong with that foul, her first, team's first, and Peely continues to pile up the points. Showing her range from distance, but when she gets on that low block where the bread is buttered, look out. Well, and she's got a, she's got a real good knack for kind of walking you up an extra step up the lane. So if you're on the top side of her, she's going to seal you and give her enough room to drop step and get that layup room. 
turnover, Gonzaga. Remember Peely coming off a great game against South Dakota State. 26 and 7 points and rebounds. Had the three triples. Well, she looks like she's going to top that. The now, lead is seven. Now we got Peely in the ball screen. I don't know if they wanted that shot. I think they wanted her to use the ball screen and see what happened. They're going to give Lonnie White that shot until she can make a couple of them. That's for sure. So here's Maxwell hopped by Wilkie. Well, there's, there's Maxwell. And there's the there's the one player on their team. Well, not one player, but they're a little more comfortable taking that mid-range off the dribble than Utah would. White almost traveled. Vieta sandwiched in. And it looks like Vieta is going to be called for that offensive foul. Comes up slowly. Great defensive positioning by Kaylin Trong right here. Trying to split it. Vieta's trying to get between the two defenders, but Trong got there, I think. A little body contact from behind by Ejim, but the initial blow was, was the offensive foul. So Vieta, who can kind of hit the tight wire with the foul trouble, picks up her first, team's first. We're early in the second quarter. Utah up by five. Wilkie is, and she's all over Maxwell. Transfer out of Wisconsin, finding a home in the starting lineup with Utah. Skip pass, working to perfection, Kalen Trong. That's, that's the catch-22 on defenses against Egypt. If you have to sag that much to help on her, you're going to leave a three-point shooter open, particularly in the weak side corner. Crowd into it. The lead now, a deuce for Utah. Huge triple by Kalen Trong. Vieta switches hands. Wants to pull up. Instead, there's the kick in the corner. Not there for McQueen. Ejim with the board, and here comes Kaylee. She'll walk it up. A chance for the Zags to draw even or go ahead. Hollingsworth back on the floor. Young's got her. Almost a travel. Nine on the shot clock now. Kaylee Trong. Tough shot, can't get it back, rim and off. And the ball belongs to Utah. So if you're gonna try to help on Ivana Ejim down in the low block, and here she goes, the guard on the weak side is trying to come and help take away that pass, but you leave a corner three-point shooter, and both Trongs and Maxwell are able to knock down that shot. The Trongs parents in attendance. Dad so influential in helping these kids turn into the basketball players they are now growing up in Houston. Look at the hustle play by Maxwell, jump ball. And the Zags will take it with that arrow heading their way. Crowd loves it. Well, both teams, I think, have gotten a good look at what they want to try to get. It's now, can you execute when there's extreme pressure? I mean, this is what, this is what tournament games are against good teams. Winner of tonight advancing to the Sweet 16. One remaining bracket to be filled, and it's this side of it. Here in Spokane, what a hustle played by Young. Speaking of tight wires, finds Vieta. Here comes Utah. Wilkie, that was short, wants to chase down her own miss, but Egypt would have none of it. Here's Kaylee Trong. Maxwell, one of the most dangerous three-point shooters in the country. Still looking for her first three. Trong will hit another three. This time it's Kaylee Trong. And look who's got the lead now. 27-26, Gonzaga with that big three, leading by a singleton, 6-12 left in the second. Back at the kennel of Gonzaga with the lead over Utah, but just by one. All right, Wednesday night's ESPN NBA double dip. Clippers, Sixers, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Then the Nuggets and the Suns. Coverage tips off with NBA countdown at 7. Three-point shooting. Boy, Mike, did you call this from both teams, but let's load up on Gonzaga. Well, Gonzaga, I mean, they're starting backcourt and wings. They, they shoot it great. And obviously, you see Maxwell's number. She's sixth in, in, in Division One. The Trongs, both over 
Um, it, it's it's incredible. I mean, as much as we talk about Utah's threes, Gonzaga comes right back at you with three elite three-point shooters. And both teams have five three-point shooters over 35%. Yep. So they, they're built for this. Big time. Packed house here at the Kennel student section going bananas. They got here early, saw some tents pitched outside the building. Love it. There's the answer out of the break. McQueen with the triple. I think they were trying to disguise that they were what they were in defensively. Little came out and played man to man on the ball handler, but they were really in a zone of some sort. McQueen with eight points, a couple of triples all the way to the rack is Kaylee Trone. They have Little guarding Vieta, trying to put some size on her to take away some of the looks they have. They have a very big lineup on the floor right now for Gonzaga. And there's Little, what she does best, rebounding. 525 left to go in the second. Here's Hollingsworth looking for some help. She'll find it in Maxwell. High pick is there. Hybens. Trong. Ivans reposting instead. Eliza drills the three. We didn't even have her on the graphic. And she's a great three-point shooter. 36% three-point shooter is Hollingsworth, one of Aussie's finest. Three-point lead, Gonzaga. Peely's been a little quiet, not even on the floor. Well, she is on the floor, my bad, out on the perimeter. Back rim and off, cooling off a little bit as Utah. Well, then they've done a better job of keeping her from getting the touches with the ball that she was getting early in the game, too. What a matchup this has been with Vieta and Kaylee Trong. Quick shot, Maxwell, you bet. Could have been a four-point play. Follow through, got her on the arm. Maxwell with and yet you know another she's triple. Loving this. And you know she's loving this, having transferred from Utah. So 35-29, Gonzaga heating up, and the Peely family for right now a little glum, but Peely's still on fire. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. And now for tonight's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. The Alyssa Peely story is unbelievable. Check out this multi-sport athlete. I mean, look at all those. She's played everything, all those state titles. I, I'm a big believer that kids are specializing maybe a little bit too soon nowadays, and these multi-sport athletes are having such great success. I think, you know, they can do so many things. They learn different body mechanics, and she's obviously really good at everything. You see somebody with her agility and speed, uh, her footwork, she's got great hands, she's just done so many things. Alyssa's dad wouldn't let her specialize, Mike. He said every single one of these sports is going to make you better in your first love. Very true. So in the living room, there's a, a, a basket at the Peely household. Nothing that can be broken. You know, there's no vases, there's there's no tchotchkes, there's, there's no frame I, pictures, it's just hoops. I can relate, as it should be. Peely back rimming off, ball knocked around into the hands of Maxwell. And you mentioned that three-pointer that she just hit against her former U teammate. Yeah, that had to have felt sweet. Well, there they've, you know, we started out with Utah making the threes. Now the Zags have made seven out of their last nine, and four different players have shot it. And will this be the fifth? Wow. Yes. Hyben says yes. Step right into that one. Doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but that was true. I've been impressed with her since we've been here. She's really helped their team. Their posts, depth, they really just rotate three posts. Um, great pass. Vieta. Unlucky there. The ball will belong to the Zags, and they hope to build on a 19 to 3 run. And this uh, this home court advantage or home crowd has really gotten louder and louder as this thing's gone the last couple minutes. You're right, Mike. I kind of like having this headset on so I can <laughs> just hear myself think and hear you talk. It's nuts in here. 
biggest lead of the game for Gonzaga. You're looking at it. Look at the constant motion by both teams. Great spacing. Kaylin Trong stepping back. Can't get the roll. Into the hands of McQueen. Doesn't have the number. She'll wait for some help. Here's Vieta. Under three to go in this second quarter. Wilkie all the way to the rack. Not there. Little battling, rebounding. And here comes Gonzaga. Good shift for Little off the bench, Mike. She really has it. I didn't really expect her that she would be playing this many minutes, but they really like her defense against this kind of an offense. Coming up at halftime, Dove in the studio. L and company, all kinds of things to talk about. Caitlin Clark, <laughs> yet another record. UConn continues to make history, both Iowa and UConn advancing today. I mean, you're talking about, I think the graphic I saw was 29 straight Sweet 16s for UConn. And Iowa, you know, they had a little scare there for a while, oh. but they played great in the last couple minutes to pull it out. Against West Virginia. Turnover. McQueen hesitates. High low inside to Peely. Quickly double teamed. The ball stays. Nope, it's going to go to the Zags. I couldn't see if they knocked it off her leg. It looked like it, but we're screened off. Let's take a look, Mike. So what do you think? Here's the double team that they had talked about going against Peely. She tries to go. Yeah, it's off her hand. It already hit the floor before Eden hit it. Great call. Don't tell any officials I said that. <laughs> Under two to go, Maxwell between the legs, and now Hollingsworth. That's that's a foul you won't like as Utah, you know, you're 20 something feet from the basket. Um, you don't need those kind. Here you have Johnson nicked for that foul, her first, team's second. So Mike Peely had 12 points in the first quarter. Right now she's sitting on 15. What's changed? The defensive effort on her. You saw the double team the last time down. You saw her being denied a little bit more at the three point line. It's players settling in better to the scouting report. Offensive wow. foul, Mike. How about that? Especially when it's a, a guard getting called for it as a screener. You, you don't need that. Wilkie. Picks up that foul, her first team's third. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, all you've got to do is go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Egypt, off the glass. Great drive across the lane. Interesting, we'll come back to that a little bit. that they have tried to find a way to get a different matchup on Ejim down on the block. Biggest lead of the game. You're looking at it right now for Gonzaga. It's double figures. Well, here's the play. They got, they, Peely has not been guarding Ejim most of the game. And she got, they did a little guard, or excuse me, post to post screen to get Utah to switch so that Peely would guard Ejim on that play. Fortier wanting a little information as Hollingsworth is called for that foul. Her first, team's third. Ejim almost got a paw on it. One minute left to go in this second quarter. McQueen backs it out. Peely wants to dive down low. Matched up against Ejim. There's the high low. Batted away by Ejim. And this is just a physical battle between those two. Great to watch. Egypt not afraid of the challenge either. She's playing really nose to nose at the top of the key right now. Man, this has been a battle. Every possession. And we're only in the second quarter. Two on the shot clock for Peely. She's got to put it up. Did she get it off in time? Oh, Alyssa Peely. They're going to take a look, but I think she got it off in time. Might have got fouled on the drive, too. Much needed bucket for Utah. 
This is a how bad do you want it game physically. Boy, amen, Mike. Well put. Look Ten at the on defense. The shot clock. Hollingsworth swooping in, and Peely gets her. <laughs> and That's then a some. tough foul. That, it, you don't need to commit that foul. I know you're trying to make a statement physically. Peely picks up that foul. Let's go back so, to the last possession. The clock is. Let's see. Did she get it out of her hand? Oh, man. I don't Ooh, know, boy. Mike. It might have still been on her fingertips. And in a game that could go down to the wire, that could be absolutely huge. They will review it yes. at, at the end of the half. Oh, it's baby. It's hard to say if it's out of her fingers right there. Doesn't look like it. All right. Hollingsworth gets one of two. Nice board by Young. Shot clock off, game clock at 10. Right here. Young all the way to the cup and scores. Great double team. Eliza good if it goes. My goodness. So it's a 41-33 Gonzaga lead. It's It's been a war. I mean, physically in the paint, it's been a war. Nose-to-nose -nose pressure on the perimeter, and yet people are still getting three-point shots off despite all the pressure. That's great execution. Classic game. We're halfway through. Let's go to the studio now with Elle Duncan and the rest of her compadres. Atmosphere inside the Kennel Electric. Quick look at the Regional Four in Portland bracket. North Carolina State will be taking on Stanford. Texas will take on the winner of this classic, Gonzaga, Utah. 41-31, Mike. At the break, they took away that bucket from Peely late in the second quarter. Well, the game was dominated early by Utah and by Peely. I mean, she came out on fire. They couldn't find her at the three-point line. And all of a sudden, the second quarter comes, and it flips. And now Gonzaga comes out and rolls up a 24-10 quarter based on them getting hot, knocking down threes, getting the tempo back, and making life much more miserable for Peely. They doubled her some, they pressured her, and the game changed. Boy, in that first quarter, though, Peely looked like she was going to drop about 50 on us tonight. She did. She got herself positioned inside, overpowered people, got herself driving to the basket off a special play from a timeout, and then she stepped out to the three and knocked down threes, and, and it just spread out the defense. And then Gonzaga adjusted, and now the Chong sisters came out, knocking down shots, penetrating, go under on the pick and roll at your risk. Skip pass to the corner for threes. Driving it to the basket. Getting the and one going to the basket. And then again, knocking down a couple threes to change the game and the whole flow of the game. And now Gonzaga has the momentum. All right, let's check out tonight's game trap brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Well, we talked about points in the paint and threes at the start of the game, and it's been exactly that. There have been 51 field goal attempts between the two teams, and 30 of them are threes. And the other points, all, all but one, are down in the lane. Analytics at its best. Gonzaga has won 35 straight here at the McCarthy Athletic Center. 35 straight. If they can seal the deal and they lead by 10 going into the third, Mike, this will go down as one of Gonzaga's biggest wins in a long time. It's why you play so hard all year to get a top four seed and have a crowd like this on your home court. This can propel you to the Sweet 16. Third quarter underway. That's not how you want to start. Egypt pick. And the deuce. The place is going nuts. And I've been so impressed by her speed. It's a sprinting post player. And look at her run. Get all the way back and get in front of Peely after laying it in at the other end. Answer not there. Peely goes to the deck. 
great offensive rebound by Peely. She was fouled. Sandwiched between two players and still came up with the ball. <laughs> So Egypt picks up that foul, her first, team's first. Nobody in foul trouble at the moment. Kaylee Truong does have two, but that's about it. Good skip. McQueen, drive, dish, nothing there for Vieta. Right into the hands of Kaylee Truong and her sister Kaylin will play catch. Here's Kaylee. Going under there. Pick and roll will be a will be a problem. I think they've adjusted a little bit. Gonzaga 29 and 2 when leading at the half. 35 straight here at the kennel. Oh, Step don't go back. under. Step don't go back. under. Oh, Mike, you're reading my mind, buddy. I would have thought they learned their lesson in the first half. Utah has to make an adjustment on that. The Trong sisters still doing their thing. McQueen, and now Peely, there's the cutter, not there for Johnson. Wilkie, catch and shoot, not there. Kaylee Trong with the rebound, and here comes Kaylin. Biggest lead of the game right now for Gonzaga. You're looking at it inside, blocked by Peely. Maxwell saves the day. 10 on the shot clock now for Kaylin Trong. Four on the shot clock. You gotta put it up if you're Kaylin. Oh! It's raining in here. Pick Maxwell. Vieta. Great hands in the hustle by Vieta. From behind, never saw her coming. Vieta didn't quit on that play. 49-31. And normally you would you would warn your teammate that someone's coming, but it's so loud in here you can't even hear that kind of help defensively. Kaylin and Kaylee, 12 points apiece. Egypt with 10. Keely denied. Ball up for grabs into the hands of Kaylin Trong. My bad, Kaylee. Here she comes. Egypt stepping in, dumping it inside, oh, to perfection, and, and one. one. There's the high-low again. Two post players that just know how to play off of each other. First they push it up the floor, Hollingsworth runs, and now the defender, Johnson, has to decide, do I guard Johnson, or do I guard Hollingsworth, or do I guard Egypt? And she's caught between the two, and, and all we get is a foul out of it, and an and one. Wilkie picks up her second, team's first. Hollingsworth completes the three-point play. And this has turned quickly. 52-31. What an answer for Peely. 3rd triple of the game for Peely. She's got 18. 12 of those coming in the first quarter. Let's see if Kaylee Tron can answer. She sure can. Looks at her bench. This place is going bananas. This is how you draw it up as a coach when you want the ideal. 15 now for Kaylee. Young, aggressive to the cup. She took advantage of all the attention being played to, paid to Peely on that play, and the lane opened up. Gonzaga's starters, all of them average in double figures. Four of them are in that double figure land right now. Hollingsworth, the only one not, or excuse me, Maxwell with the five. And we got a foul here on Young trying to chase Maxwell around the screen. Young's first, team's second. And Ejim's getting a well-deserved rest because she has been sprinting both directions the entire quarter. Gonzaga has made nine straight triples. Nine as Vieta picks up her second. And as soon as you start making those, now you see what happens on this kind of play. You can get a foul because you can put the ball on the floor a little bit. 55-36.
Inbounding underneath their own basket. Short there. McQueen wants to push. Six minutes left to go in a third quarter dominated to this point by Gonzaga. And you see the length that the wing players and the post players have for Gonzaga right now. Other than the Trong sisters, they're long everywhere. Little and Hybens into the rotation now for Gonzaga. Johnson back rim and off. Vieta leaps for the offensive rebound, and Utah will reload. There's the high hedge, Little. Keeley wants it inside. Hollingsworth and from the weak side. What a play by Kaylin Trong. Oh, man. That was the biggest emphasis on half court defense today in shoot around was the help on the backside against Peely. Ivan's whistled for that foul, her first, team second. Well, here's, here's the backside help. Peely's got walked her defender Hollingsworth up the lane, but Kaylin Trong comes from the weak side, knocks the ball out, and keeps it in play. Had the presence to just flip it to her sister. Great pass inside, Vieta inside to Peely. There's no help for that one. That one happens too quickly. Great pass. Peely now with 20 points. Her 19th 20-point game of the season. My goodness. Kaylin Trong wants to take it all the way in. Short there, good D by Vieta. Everybody to the deck. And finally, the whistle blows and it'll stay with Gonzaga. 55-38, Gonzaga looking for its 36th straight home victory with the big lead when the stakes are highest. Just a magnificent shot of Spokane Falls. We are in the wonderful city of Spokane for second round action of the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One, part of our Regional Four Portland pod, Gonzaga with a big lead. Let's check out how they are fueling the run, these Zags, brought to you by Wendy's. Well, it starts with a, just a defensive play to start the half, and Egypt sprints the floor. Now you got the Trong sisters involved, and a high-low, and another three. And they've got Utah on their heels with those threes. I mean, look at this. Kaylee, Kaylin, you don't even know sometimes who's going to have it, but they are a combined seven of eight from the three-point line. And they're the proud parents, Kaylee and Kaylin's mom and dad, coming all the way from Houston. Almost thrown away. Ejim can't get it home off the glass. Utah needs a run during the last 4.45 of this third quarter. Get back in and feel a little better about themselves. Peely, her own miss. Peely, so strong, she'll go to the line. There's a great example of what Peely can do with the ball. At the three-point line, she's a threat. Shot fakes, dribble, gets in the lane, doesn't make it, and chases her own rebound down. Ejim picks up her second foul. That's a tough stat for Utah right there when she's outscored the rest of the, her team by, the, by herself. They need some other people to step up and make some shots. They've really struggled from the three-point line since early in the game. Yeah, it's been all Peely. Little help from McQueen and Young off the bench, and that is about it. 55-40, 4.35 left to go in the third quarter. Does Utah have a few stops in them? Vieta, quick hands. Well, before she could get down to the rim. It's a foul to stop the break. Yep. Kaylin Trong with that infraction. It wasn't really an intentional out there. I don't think to, that that would have caused stoppage of play, but it was a good defensive play just to stop it. Great defensive yeah. play by VA to start it, and a good defensive play by Gonzaga to stop the break. Kaylin Tron with her first, team's fourth. 422 left to go in the third quarter. Here's Young. She's been very good off the bench. Three-pointer, and it's a wild one. Peely tries to save it and does. Great hustle play by Peely. 
you can just tell by her body language and her look on her face, she wants this so badly. Egypt picks up her third, and she will sit. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins Thursday. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, TBS, CBS. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. So again, Mike, Egypt picks up her third. It's a little bit of an opening here for Utah. They didn't take advantage of it in the first half when she went out. Let's see if they can this time. 55-42. And now the press, we talked a little bit. They, Utah is not a team that presses a lot, but they're down. They do, they've done it in the past when they've gotten down. Now we're seeing full court pressure on both guards. Ejim will sit. Kaylee Trong back into the lineup. I think you'll see a lot more ball screens right now without Ejim in the game, trying to get some penetration by their guards to draw and kick like that. Back rim and off. Young with the board. Wants to find Vieta and does. Vieta scoreless at this point. Normally gives you eight a pop. Young hesitates. Can't get it home. Great job by Keeley to knock it into the hands of McQueen. McQueen That's over a great the screen. Again. So much attention is to stay home with Peely that when she sets a screen like that, the help's got to come from somewhere else. McQueen now with 10 points. So good in round one. Picking up where she left off here in round two. I pick Hollingsworth, Kaylee Trong. Man, does a full gainer right in front of the home folks in terms of the students. You go to the rim at your own risk today. Healy picks up her second. Team's sixth. Now they're going to give that foul to Young. Well, we had a very clean first half, too, with only nine total fouls called. Now both teams are in the bonus the rest of this quarter. That's we haven't point. been in the bonus the whole first half. Crowd wanting a stop. Gonzaga back in the zone again, trying to get an extra helper in the lane against Peely. Young looking for that baseline, just kind of shoves Maxwell out of the way, but can't. Seal the deal. Couple of layups missed by Utah. That doesn't help the cause. They have numbers. There it is. Stepping into the three. Oh, heartbreaker basket didn't want it. How did that stay out? Even Kaylee Trong is kind of laughing at that one. That is the spin cycle. Oh, heartbreaker. Great hustle, though, to keep the ball alive and knock it off of Utah to get the ball back. Good point. Maxwell pull up Jay. Quick release. She's the best mid-range shooter in the building, I think. She does have a triple to her credit. Has hit a three in every single game this season. 59-44, 205 left to go in the third. McQueen backs it up. Three not there. Deja Young is going to miss that one. Somebody might want to block her out. She has been terrific off the bench for Utah. Nine points now for Young, one over her season average. So Gonzaga will call a quick timeout. The lead is still 13 for Gonzaga. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. 59-46, Gonzaga with the lead over Utah. 
The proud family of Alyssa Peely in the house, but Mike, she's had a little bit of help, but she's had to kind of carry the mail. She really has, uh, you know, they've only got two players in double figures and she's she's had to, you know, do it at both ends too. She's in a physical battle defensively and it's just been hard. There's a good look at McQueen's mom and dad. Mom Melanie played for the great Elaine Elliott at Utah back in the day. And McQueen is their only other scorer in double figures. Hollingsworth again from beyond the arc. Well, that's a good way to come out of a timeout. Draw up a play uh, to get a three, especially when you don't have Ejim in the game. You got to go look for other people to get scores. That's a nice way to start. 13 points now for Hollingsworth. 19 double figure games on the year. Again, young, dynamic off the bench. She's been a huge bright spot to keep them kind of energized. In double figures now is Young with 11. Four Gonzaga players in double figures. They're getting the balance they wanted. Maxwell back rim and off. Unlucky there for Peely. Hybens grabs it, and Gonzaga will reload. Under a minute to go in the third quarter, 62-48, Gonzaga with the lead. Hollingsworth, pump fake. Seven on the shot clock now for Hybens. Dump it great inside, Tyler. Hollingsworth. That's great interior defense. Might have got fouled on the first one. Second one was clean. Crowd thought so too. Utes will take it the other way. Deja Young playing the D on both, or playing the ball on both ends of the floor. Not there, McQueen, Hybens going hard for that board. Foul by and, Young. And it's bonus. Yep. I feel bad for Vieta right now. She's made several great plays driving down the lane and great, great kick out passes to wide open threes and they just haven't dropped for her teammates. She's doing everything she can to get everybody involved. Young picking up that foul. So Hybens will toe the line. They get a breather here for Maxwell for the end of the quarter to get her the extra minute. Sixth woman of the year, Mount Hybens. You're looking at her at the free throw line. Junior out of the Netherlands. Transfer from Syracuse. Didn't play there as she was injured. Found a home in Spokane. Keeley grabs that rebound. Will not be tied up. They sub Esther Little in for defense for this last possession. They can switch. They get some size on the switch. Keeley rimming out. Unlucky. It was a good look. And that'll do it. Gonzaga one quarter away from advancing to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2015. It's a 62-48 lead for the Zags. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? House here at the kennel and the home folks are digging this score. Gonzaga leading Utah 62-48 after three quarters. Well, when Yvonne Ejim picked up her third foul, it was a 19-point game. Now it's down to 14, and she's still sitting there. We'll see. She's back on the court now to start the fourth quarter. They, they lost a little bit of the momentum. Utah got a little bit of footing in those last couple minutes. We'll see if they can carry it over here. Tonight's star stories brought to you by Honda. You're looking at the leading scores. Well, the Chong sisters have done what they're supposed to do to lead this team. Four and double figures for Gonzaga. All of those four starters. Keeley down low. Back in Egypt up and scoring. 
Belgium's got to let her go a little bit, Mike, with those three fouls. 24 now for the great Alyssa Peely over her seasonal average. But Egypt answers. Great pass. They had it set up to get her cross screen inside. 12 now for Egypt. She gets you 20 points a game, sitting for a little bit in foul trouble. She's had a lot of help from her friends. Peely tries to jab, step past Egypt. Bonnie would not let her by. 10 on the shot clock now. Vieta backs it up with five on the shot clock. Not there into the hands of Hollingsworth. And here comes Kaylin Tron. Fourth quarter underway here at the kennel. Gonzaga has won 35 straight in this building. Kaylin Tron, not there. Didn't quite catch it clean when the pass came. A trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. And there's the carry, we'll go the other way. Utah needs to dig in right now. They want to get back in this game. They need to string together a couple stops in a row a couple times. Indeed, maybe even more than a couple of times, Mike. They just can't keep trading baskets. Double-digit lead for Gonzaga at the half, and they've never let go of that double-figure lead. Turnover, Vieta, McQueen on the wing. Little back in for defensive purposes. Peely, ball into the hands of Young. Peely from three, again not there. Ejim skying, taking it away from her buddy Hollingsworth. When you get a rebound like that and Vieta's hanging around, you better protect the ball. Maxwell. That's, that's a foul you don't need. Yep. Young with the foul, her second. Team's first of the quarter. Wilkie back onto the floor for Deja Young. She's been really good off the bench. Wilkie scoreless right now. Vieta scoreless right now. Maxwell inching ever closer to becoming the fifth starter in double figures for Gonzaga, which is what happens night in and night out for this club. Every night they're just as consistent as can be. Foul Boy, is gonna that's go. pretty good defense against Kaylin Tron, her second, team's first. And this, this is where it gets hard sometimes because it's been a very physical game and a lot has gone on in that game. That one's kind of out in front of the official, but it's kind of what's happened a lot all night. McQueen all the way to the cup, aggressive. Really good screen set by Alyssa Peely to get her going on that drive downhill, get her downhill. Kaylee Tron in for her sister, Kaylin. Remember, Egypt playing with three fouls. Here's Hollingsworth. Inside look. She'll go to the line. Keeley got her. That's number three on Alyssa. That's a really hard pass to make from that angle because Egypt was not on the ball side of the basket. They got her on the back side, and Peely was trying to anticipate and beat her to the block and ended up being behind her. So here's Ejim. She's got the 12 points and six boards. And just to remind you, Gonzaga, the last mid-major to remain alive in this NCAA Women's Championship Tournament. They are no stranger to the NCAA Tournament. They're no stranger to advancing. They're showing you why. Wilkie. Finally on the board. That's well, a great job of rotating the ball quickly against the scramble defense. And there's a ton of time left in this game. That was a huge three for Wilkie to transfer out of Wisconsin. So one of the things that Gonzaga did to practice against Peely's three is they're doing what we call icing the pick and roll, keeping it on the side, 
and then as Egypt helps, they rotate to try to take away the three. But the problem is they didn't communicate and they never got the last rotation back to Wilkie to knock down that three. Jenna Johnson, by the way, picking up her third foul, team's third. Taking a quick media break, 67-55, Utah hanging around. Still a lot of time left in this one. Under seven minutes to go here in Spokane. Gonzaga leading Utah by 12. While we were at the break, the officials took a look at that last foul call. They're still visiting with both coaches. Great time to bring in rules analyst Lisa Mattingly. What do you got, Lisa? Well, hey, y'all. Uh, this is unnecessary contact. It's hard. It's to the face. Um, and they're going to be, uh, they'll penalize the common foul that they had initially. And then they will go two shots to any player on the court uh, or any player and the ball to the offended team at midcourt. Uh, I think this is exactly the right call. The crew did a really good job on that. I concur. That was uh, exactly the way it should have been called. And that's what they're gonna that's what they're gonna go line up for right now. And this could be a pivotal moment in this game, Mike. Yes. Yeah, Peely's gonna shoot the two free throws. Any player can shoot him on the court. Hollingsworth, by the way, picks up her second. Team second. Here's Peely. Is unnerved, uh-uh, unfazed is the word Peely would use. Crowd hollering, hits him. Peely eyeballing another 30-point game. She's got 26 to go along with the seven boards. 67-57. We got a lot of time for yeah, a 10-point game. Yeah, we do. Game. Yeah, we do. Utah hanging around and then some. McQueen. And now Peely, nothing there on the roll for Peely, so they'll work it from the perimeter. Now Peely dives and scores. Tough shot against Egypt, and Peely got popped in the face. And Egypt was very lucky she didn't get her fourth there. 28 now for Peely, carrying the freight. Vieta now bounces that, off that, the pin. That contact was the same thing that was called down at the other end here. Ball up for grabs. We're going to go the other way. And Little will get called for that foul. Well, and the 5,000 some hundred Gonzaga referees do not like it. 6,000 on the nose. Three team fouls on each squad. Crowd is up. Peely, the fake. Not as patient that time. They can, if Utah wants it, they can get a switch almost every time down by the play they ran a couple minutes ago, and they can get Peely on a guard. They're just going to have to be patient enough to get it. Egypt now bailed out by Hollingsworth. Five on the shot clock, though. Back door not there. Egypt ball on the deck. Quick, sweeping in. Ball never hit the rim. Nope, it did not. My great call, and ball belongs to Utah, and the Utes are feeling a rally. Crowd imploring the Gonzaga defense for a stop. 5.15 left to go in the fourth. Here's Wilkie. 67-59, Peely that's great help. And it's, good, and it's a really good thing when it's a post coming. Egypt just too deep underneath that basket. Peely's got, Peely's got a guard on her in the lane. Oh, man. Oh, they missed it. Inside look. Inside look. Peely. And we in got here, a six point game. Here come the Utes. Another 30 point game for the great Alyssa Peely. 
her fifth 30 point game of the season and a ton of time left. And and I will say Gonzaga is really lucky that there weren't fouls called on those two buckets because she had great position and Ejim was there with some body contact. Here it is. That might be contact on oh, the shoulder right there. I agree. But but Peely has carved out her niche down there. Peely, another 30 point game. All right, well we have a minute to breathe. It's time for Get More, brought to you by Geico. Well, there's a lot of Get More. 30 <laughs> points on 10 of 18, she got seven boards and over 2,000 points. You're doing a lot of work to come up with all of that. I'll be very interested right here to see what Gonzaga does. They came out of their last time out, got uh, Ivan each of two low post touches, and they got two buckets. And now they've got her on the perimeter the last couple possessions, swinging the ball. She's got to go back at somebody inside again. Peely has 30 of Utah's 61 points, bringing the Utes back and feeling like they've got action. Maxwell. Pulls up, not there, into the hands of Wilkie, and a chance for the youths to draw ever closer. And they've held Gonzaga to one and done on a lot of possessions in this quarter. It's the closest Utah has been in a long time. Nine nothing, Utah run. Ball stays with very the Utes. Very fortunate hustle play by Kaylee Trong to knock that out because that was going to be an offensive rebound by Alyssa Pilly if, if she hadn't touched that. The closest Utah has been since the second quarter when it was 35-29. Wilkie, not there. Hollingsworth. And now Kaylee Trong. Three forty five left to go in this thriller. A little bit of a late whistle, yes. but it looks like the right call. Didn't like what they had on the pick and roll. So Trong just keeps going and gets the hack down across the arm. McQueen got her. So fourth team foul on Utah, second on McQueen. Here is Kaylee Trong. Perfect from the line. And man, that's critical here in stretch run time. Well, the other thing is that foul now puts Gonzaga in the bonus the rest of the way, too. One of two. Utah's right there. Big time. Boy, things are looking grim for the Utes, and they have just kept coming back thanks to Peely. Vieta wanted to go inside to Peely. She reposts, not there. Here's Vieta. Vieta hits the deck, not there. Peely fighting, fighting. The ball belongs to Gonzaga. Boy, there's a lot of contact inside both ways. Great drive, all the scrum inside. That might be a foul, but. Ejim just holds the ground, plays through it, and you have to. When you get games like this, you got to play through all this. Can't worry about how it's being called. Keeley's going to be whistled for that foul, and that is her fourth, Mike. And Ejim's going to the line. Keeley's going to have to be very careful because obviously. She's the one Utah is going to look to and for. And I would expect Gonzaga to go right back at her the next time down. Ejim, the senior out of Canada, who announced in front of a packed house back in February that she is coming back next year. Place went bananas. Two big tosses for Bonnie. And she's really gotten better as a free throw shooter, too. The lead is nine. Three minutes to go. Sold out crowd here at the kennel is up and roaring. What a game we've been treated to. Skip pass. Wilkie, nothing there. Tries the baseline. Good D by Maxwell. Into the hands of Egypt. 
Healy's got to be careful. You can't be doing that when you got four fouls. You're reading my mind, partner. Hesitation. Kaylin, she'll go to the line. And that's a great sense about the game. You can attack the basket. You know you can get to the free throw line. It's bonus. Good defensive play at one end. A great physical rebound. Gets through a foul there. And then they get an attack because they've got numbers. There's two people down here bothering Ejim on the rebound. And now it becomes four on three. Vieta picks up that foul, her third. Kaylin Tron, first free throw of the night. It is true. And you do not want to put Gonzaga on the free throw line. They are basically an 80% free throw shooting team. She gets them both. The lead is 11. A little separation for the Zags. 2.30 left to go in the fourth quarter. A trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. Texas awaiting the winner of this evening's game. The Queen from Rimanoff. Ejim flags it down. Huge. You can see the want in her eyes. Ejim with another double-double. She has just been sensational. And, and goes right back up, right back up. And Utah has to call a timeout and does. The crowd tells the story. Sold out, full house, jam packed, butts in the seat, baby. 74-61. Well, Ejim just wants the ball right now. They get a high-low situation. She doesn't connect on the first one, doesn't quit playing, goes right back up. That's a dagger. This veteran team, what a ride and run they have had, Mike. And this is one of the most special moments in their careers. Well, you got six seniors here. Obviously, we know Ejim's coming back. And they have several grad students. But look at this. You got five players in double figures. Uh, they, they really, we, we were here the very first day when they had their press conference. And they had several players up on the podium. And they talked about how much they were playing for each other. That it was be special to play on their home court. They wanted that top four seed so badly. They wanted to give this crowd kind of a going away present for the seniors to themselves and to the fans because this group has played together and done so many special things. And now they're a minute 42 away from going to the Sweet 16. And that's when you start your season and you think about that, that's one of the big goals right on your list. You check it off, you know, win your conference regular season, get to the NCAA tournament. And the next one that you check the boxes, we're going to the Sweet 16. That's what they're playing for for the next minute 42. Gonzaga will play anybody, anywhere, anytime. Brutal non-conference schedule. At one point of the season, they had the fifth toughest schedule in the United States. Gonzaga, three and one against the Pac-12, having defeated Stanford, Cal, and Arizona. Well, that was a foul that uh, Gonzaga had to give, so it's not going to hurt him. Ball's going to go out of bounds on the side. I don't think Tri Chong Lok liked the foul, but it ended up working out okay. Kaylin with her third. Teams fourth. Buck 30 left to go. The lead is 13 for Gonzaga. Looking to go to their first Sweet 16 since 2015. Ejim with yet another board to add to her double-double. And they can use a lot of clock right here. And they will. They're going to reverse the ball as many times as they can before they shoot. Gonzaga looking for a program best 32nd victory of the season. They're moments away from just that. Kaylin Tron rimming out. But that was a great offensive possession because they used 20 plus seconds of the shot clock. Listen to this crowd. You gotta put it up if you're Vieta. You have no time. Inside, there's Peely. So 32 now for Peely, five off of tying her career best. And Gonzaga's gonna take the timeout to advance it so they don't have to face the full court pressure here. 
So again, the last ticket to be punched to the Sweet 16 is our game right now. It's been a classic. Texas awaits the winner of this contest. North Carolina State, Stanford already advancing. Regional four in Portland. That pod has been dynamite. Gonzaga, mid-major, they're saying, uh-uh, nope. We'll take on anybody. And they are 38.6 away, Mike, from advancing to the Sweet 16. I'll tell you, you know, when the, when the bracket came out and I knew we were doing these games, I kept thinking Monday night could be a special game, and it's worked out that way. The stars of this game have shown up and played like stars. Boy, amen. Healy with 32, Egypt with the double double, the Trong sisters doing their you got thing. A foul if you're going to try to stay in the game. I think they've conceded. Yeah, this game's <laughs> over. Here's Hollingsworth with 10 on the shot clock. They don't even need a shot, it doesn't really matter. Kaylin, and now Egypt, two on the shot clock. And, and that's the, the way it's gone for Utah yeah. the last few minutes. McQueen with the foul, 9.5 left. 36 straight home victories and now, watch Mike. watch this crowd as these guys come out. Kaylin Tron. Maxwell. Ejim. Oh, what a moment. What a night for Gonzaga and this wonderful program representing the WCC and all mid-majors with a lot of pride. That's got to be a proud family, no matter the outcome of the game. She was she was really, really good tonight. 35 points for Alyssa Peely, two off of tying her career high. But this is Gonzaga's night. First Sweet 16 appearance, yep, since 2015. Wow. Home court advantage, I guess. It is. I mean, this is, we said it early on, this is what you play for. You want to be on your home court. It's hard enough to win in the tournament as it is. You want to get every edge you can. My hat's off to both of these teams. They were sensational. We got treated to a great game. Just a fabulous game to determine that last ticket punch to the Sweet 16. Again, Peely with tears streaming down. Magnificent leading her Utes. This night, though, belongs to the Zags and their hometown crowd. It's it's uh, it's always fun to watch a team celebrate, and I always get this little extra thing in my heart for the team that loses. Look at these guys going in to celebrate with their fans. Look at that student section engulfing the heroines of the night. Look at this. remember this forever and I can't imagine what this must be like for each and every one of these Gonzaga players. Wow. Let's take a look now at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. And it's quite a performance. 
the effort and force that Ivani Egypt plays with is great. I mean, she can outrun guards. She works relentlessly at both ends of the floor. She rebounds, and she's coming to visit us so we can ask her all about it. And there she is, just finishing it off. Girl. We hate to take you away from the crowd, but thank you for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, the mindset for the Zags coming into this game, you had home court advantage, but you knew you'd have to be at your best against oh. this great Utah club. Yeah, for sure. I think if anything, it was just dependent on our energy, and I think the crowd really fed into that. And I mean, the Zags and Zags work together, so we got it done. Well, we watched you prepare for the last couple of days in the game you played the other day. I, I'm more impressed, and, and I don't know how you do this, but you think you can outrun everybody in the whole <laughs> building, the guards, the other posts, and your energy level really carries off on your team. Thank but you. I saw you keep reminding your teammates today of shoot around of what was at stake. Yeah, of course. I mean, if anything, we always have a lot of leaders on this team talking, and we're always trying to encourage each other. So I'm just feeding into what my teammates are giving me. And I mean, whatever they need, I'm going to provide. So I'm so proud of them today. Well, I'll ask you one more. How much fun is this? Who has a better day than you right now? Um, nobody. <laughs> Let's go, Zach. <laughs> Good luck next week. We're really looking forward to watching you guys play. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Congratulations, Vani. Another double-double for you, you beast. So that's a wrap from the kennel. Gonzaga defeating Utah 77 to 66. The Zags advance to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2015. For Mike Tebow, our wonderful broadcast crew, I'm Ann Schott saying so long from the kennel. What a win for Gonzaga. They're going to the Sweet 16.